You just want to hear this. That's not. That's. Don't do that. That's not. Why? Well, if I want to do it. Well, I'm gonna cut it out. <laughs> Welcome to part two of our Frequently Asked Questions video series. series. Yes. Hopefully you saw part one where we answered a lot of your questions regarding how we get our mail, how to work on the road, and things like that. Mm -hmm. well, let's just jump right into our part two with our first question. How do you get your prescriptions on the road and what do you do about your doctor's appointments? Medical I get that, yeah, I get that question a lot because if you followed our channel at all, you know that I suffer from chronic Lyme disease and several other illnesses. And I have a lot of health requirements, medical needs, that kind of thing. So I guess I'll start with the prescription part of it because I have a lot of them. Yeah. And it's easy and it can be a pain all at the same time. I've used CVS pretty much the entire time that we've been on the road now for a year and a half. And the good thing is, is they do let you transfer prescriptions from one location to the next. It's just not always a flawless process. Yeah. Some so. in some states have different requirements for mm -hmm. different kinds of drugs. Yeah. So like some of your pain medication mm -hmm. is now classified, even though it's not a narcotic, it's somehow classified. Certain states will classify it as a narcotic and so that would that threw us off a couple of times mm -hmm. and they wouldn't let a prescription be transferred. And then so then I would just have to get a brand new prescription from my doctor. Some states don't accept electronic prescriptions yeah. if it's out of state. I found more of that in the Northeast. Yeah, some states, I think like New York, they would not accept an electronic prescription. They would only accept paper. Because it's out of state. Yeah, because but however, Florida only does electronic and not paper. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it was. We had to have a piece of paper mailed to us, FedExed to mm -hmm. us. Yeah. You learn as you go, but for the most part, I've been able to transfer my prescriptions to a new location every time I need to get them filled. I have also started filling for 90 days for those prescriptions that my insurance will let me do that. That makes things a lot easier. And there have been times where we've been in locations where there's no CVS, so I will just have to get it transferred or filled at whatever local pharmacy is nearby. Mm -hmm. And that's no big deal. Um, for me, I'm very lucky that I have a very good relationship with my doctor and her nurse that works for her, and I can just reach out to her personally and, and ask for a new prescription. You know, I'm lucky like that. I know a lot of doctor's offices aren't that flexible when it comes to getting prescriptions filled. So it's sort of an independent situation on how many doctors you use for your prescriptions and whatnot. But right. um, that's just something that you're gonna have to work out on your own. But CVS, for the most part, has been pretty good. And as far as our insurance coverage goes, because that's kind of a related mm -hmm. topic, we're lucky in that we have good, good coverage through my nine to five job. Yeah. So we don't have a lot of information on how to get plans if you're, say, you know, independently employed. Or... I think there are some resources coming up soon though for mm -hmm. that. Another question about health that I get asked a lot is how do you handle a doctor's appointment or if you need a doctor's appointment? For me, again, I have a great relationship with my doctor. She's in Florida, but she lets me do phone appointments. We right. could probably do Skype or something like that too if we wanted to. I've been with her for so long that she really listens to kind of what I think might be wrong and we'll order tests and things like that. Right. And then I'll just find a local laboratory that accepts our insurance and go from there. Mm -hmm. And then we always schedule our annual checkups, dentists, dermatology, you know, mole scans, things like mm -hmm. that for when we're back in the Tampa area. And we try to get a good few weeks there so that we can book all mm -hmm. of our doctor's appointments and ahead Daisy's of time. vet. Daisy's vet, that's right. Oh yeah, we're yeah. talking about you. We said vet, yes, we know. So yeah, I mean, it can be a challenge when you have medical issues and you're on the road, but you're just gonna have to find what works for you. And I feel like it's worked out pretty well for us so far. Yeah, with traveling full time, there are gonna be things that are trade-offs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, there are gonna be things that are a little bit more complicated and more difficult when you live in an RV full time than when you lived in the house. Pretty much everything is a little bit more complicated. That's true. We were okay with that going into it and we just mm -hmm. expected it. So to us, it's not really a big deal. Yeah. So. Don't go into RVing thinking it's just going to be easy. Easy peasy. Yeah. It's work, but it's a labor of love for sure. Mm -hmm. 
Another question we get asked quite frequently is in regards to RV clubs like Good Sam, Passport America. I bring up those two because we're members. Yeah, I have to say though that we joined a lot of them before we even knew if we were going to need them the yeah. in, the, in the very beginning. And I think that was a mistake. Well, we use most of them. The Good Sam, Passport America. Right, but to, to that KLA. point, we didn't use a lot of them until like se maybe several months out. And by yeah. that point, you've already wasted however many months of your of your very membership true. very true so you can wait to buy a membership when you're like booking so right now at this koa you could wait till you get here sign up and then they would apply your rewards card um and rewards right. points or whatever and then you started on that day right That's a good so point. we do belong to several yeah so really the short answer is don't worry about it until you go to one i don't really think that you do that's just my opinion yeah good sam has come in handy sometimes but with good sam it's usually just weekdays that you can get the good sam since we stay at places for usually two weeks at a time the weekly rate is usually cheaper and we don't have any experience with using like the thousand trails life membership no. or anything like that so i'm sorry that we don't have information on that but Jason I believe, and Ray. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say that. Yeah. yeah, Jason and Ray have a great video on that. Jason we'll and Ray, the getaway couple, is who mm -hmm. he's referring to. Thousand Trails seems to be one of those things that you either love it or you mm -hmm. hate it. Well, yeah. I guess, or you could be like us and just not give a crap. But yeah. <laughs> we don't really know. We don't want to be tied to just certain parks. Uh, we want to be just, you know, just go to an area and pick just anything we want. Yeah, that um, doesn't mean that in the future that won't change. But Passport yeah. America, gosh, we haven't used that. I couldn't even tell you the last time we used a passport in America. Yeah, it's a good deal because you get 50% off when you do stay, but we haven't really come across any. Well, that and sometimes the seasonality affects whether they places will accept the passport in America or not. True. There are a couple of memberships that aren't technically like camping memberships, but are awesome. The biggest one is Harvest Hosts. For sure. Yeah. Harvest Hosts is amazing. We do have a separate video we did on that mm -hmm. because it was that amazing. Uh, but you pay one time, I think it's... 79 bucks. $79 for a year. However, 15% uh, discount code using our link. And you can also add on a golf package, which we're hoping to check out soon. With Harvest Host, if you're unfamiliar, it is, gosh, a network of hundreds of different farms, museums, breweries, wineries, all kinds of really cool, unique places that will allow you to come and spend bring your RV and spend the night or maybe even a couple of nights on their property mm -hmm. for free. They do ask that you buy something from the business, you go to the museum, you be a, a patron of them. Yeah, but, but a lot of times, I mean, if you're parked at a brewery or a restaurant, how convenient is that? You don't have to cook <laughs> for the night. This is or true. you can go and you can have a beer or whatever. If you don't drink, you can have a soda or something like that. And uh, we've had some really cool experiences and we just look forward to staying at some more that will definitely pay for itself if you use it even just a couple of times mm. the other one is called boondockers welcome we haven't used that recently mm -mm. but we did use it quite a bit our first year both of those memberships are really about a place to stay for a day or two mm -hmm. maybe like in route and quite honestly harvest host has been our that's what we want to try to do once we found harvest host we kind of forgot a little bit about the boondockers welcome right because boondockers welcome is often more difficult to get into especially with a bigger rv like ours because it's yeah. neighborhoods and stuff usually yeah it's, it's people sharing their property and uh and they can be hit and miss you know mm -hmm. depending on where they're located we've had some good neighborhoods and some not, not so good, so good neighborhoods, neighborhoods. Yeah. so with a business i think that you know for me i feel a little bit safer mm -hmm. you're typically way. dealing with a big field or a parking lot or someplace mm -hmm. large yeah. not somebody's driveway or in front of their house or beside their house yeah. you just never know yeah. it's, it's a good tool to have in your arsenal of things and options right one question we get asked a lot and actually a question that really bothered me when we were in the planning stages and something that really concerned me was what about bad storms what do you do um safety i was very scared about that in the beginning i'm still a little scared you know? she's scared she's pretty much scared of everything no that's daisy <laughs> out of all the natural disasters and things that can come your way tornadoes i think are the scariest tornadoes scare the crap out of me especially in an rv now i grew up in the midwest so i probably have a stronger fear of them than this guy because you know florida hurricanes but you get plenty of notice for the yeah. hurricanes. So, what do we do about it? You know we like to be prepared. <laughs> you know we're planners. So we have a couple of tools for this. Well, first is we have a couple of weather radios. Mm -hmm. 
NOAA weather band radio. So we've got one that stays mounted behind our TV and is on all the time. And we also have one in the truck that we can pop out and use in there if we're concerned. We also have a couple of different weather apps with alerts turned on. Yes. It's funny, we actually probably get alerts on this for more things. Yeah, uh, but the weather be radio high. behind the TV here will come on suddenly and kind of be like Warning. <laughs> and then we're like ah! <laughs> yes, it's, it's loud in the middle of the night. It does but, its job. Yeah, but you want to get woken up in the middle of the night totally. if there's some really severe weather coming. Totally. Also, whenever we get to a location, we scope out where is the nearest shelter. So you already kind of have it in your head. Okay, in this location, if it goes to hell in a handbasket, we can go right over here to the main office yeah. or right over here to this bathhouse. Someplace secure and solid, you know, cement walls. Mm -hmm. cinder block that kind of thing and, and for me i always and i don't even know if you realize i do this but when we are having a bad storm and i start to get a little scared and a little bit panicky i get my purse and shoes and make sure that i'm dressed well enough to so go you, outside so you're all ready to go and you're just gonna not let me just kind of no but you're usually <laughs> dressed and you're usually dressed and ready to go but That's i'm just true. saying you know a lot of times if i'm especially if i'm having a bad day i'm still in my pjs and I, so I want to just make sure that I have Daisy's leash and I just put all that in my purse and I kind of sit it by the door. I don't really tell you that I do that because you'd probably just make fun of me. <laughs> and, but I, I do. I would make fun of That's but, a yeah. good thing to do. Yeah. Uh, another question, which is a big topic of concern for a lot of you and especially a lot of people who are in the planning stages and looking to purchase an RV is, do you guys really find a lot of places that can fit an RV your size? Because we've been told that not a lot of places accommodate large RVs. How do you find them? The answer is watch this video. <laughs> Next. No, yeah. we, we do a lot of planning. We did a whole uh, video on planning. And the answer is, yeah, we're not gonna get into most national parks being 44 feet long. We knew that. We knew that going yeah. into this lifestyle though. And we were okay with that because we wanted the space and the RV that we have. We're still gonna see all the same things. We're just not gonna be parked and camped inside them. And yeah. quite honestly, a lot of them don't have very good cell coverage inside the parks. So, so we wouldn't be able to wouldn't work be, yeah, anyhow. Be able to do it anyway, That's so. true. And we wouldn't be able to reserve a site in there anyhow. So yeah, all of them are first come, first serve. Right. So yeah, we did a whole video on that recently. And in the year and a half we've been doing this, really haven't had any trouble finding a place for our RV. We've been in probably at least 50 or so locations. At least. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, it's just all about planning. We haven't had any issue. Oh, well, hi there. You waking up from your nap when it comes to oh. hi? Oh, hi, puppy doll. She got stink breath. Oh, yeah, you're stinky. We got two more to go. A question we get asked frequently by people who are thinking about toy haulers because they ride big motorcycles or a couple of motorcycles, etc. Or a razor yeah. or whatever. They're curious how we tie down and secure Lucille, our 2017 Indian Roadmaster. She's a big girl. Yeah, she weighs about 980 pounds. And so, yeah, one of the questions is how do we secure her down? What wheel chalk do we use? And we'll just show you. Roll it. It's travel day. Yep, so we're gonna show you how we put Lucille in here and... Secure the office and then pull Lucille in here and how we make sure she's secure. So the only thing that's different from our camp breakdown setup video is no more benches, no more desk. We no more standalone desk. No more standalone desk. Now we have two custom big desks. We have these monitors now on swivels, and then I wrap these, and you'll see that when I put this up, I'm going to put it up just high enough so that it touches the bunk and secures it but isn't supporting the weight of the bunk. Now those are good and secure, but they're not pushing up so much that all the weight of the bunk is on them. And we've traveled like this for a good 20 or so trips. And it's just been solid. Knock on wood. I know this is wood because I built it. <laughs> I just now get everything out of the way, roll the carpet up, and then we'll bring in the seal.
And that's it for those. Okay. These up. Garage is set up, desks are up, chairs and file cabinet stowed. Everything is in garage mode. I just have to put the wheel chock down so that I can ride the motorcycle in and put the ramp down and bring the bike in. This is the wheel dock. Not affiliated at all, just a happy user. You can see basically now the hydraulic is locked down and when I roll up on the motorcycle with the wheel in here I can reach that with my foot and it locks the wheel in. So I just got to put this still these away and put this into ramp mode. A little trick that I've learned getting these things uh, out of their hooks down here is to push down the plastic piece with one foot and then kick it out with this foot. There's a couple different issues that can happen with the ramp. One is it could be too steep depending on how you're parked and leveled. Uh, if it's just too steep, one trick you can do is just raise the nose, put the front landing gear down, jack the nose up and bring the tail down and make the, the ramp a little more level. In this particular situation, we are a little steep and also not level this way, left to right. So what I'm going to do is put some blocks underneath, that'll bring the ramp up a little bit, but put more blocks on one side than the other so that they even out. Yeah, that's not level? Yeah. So two blocks on this side, one on that side. This has to be pretty good. A little more of a bump here, that's okay. Look at Daisy. Daisy freaking out. Are you freaking out? We're not going to leave you, puppy. That holds both doors and both. Yeah. These things. Yeah. <laughs> holds them both out. Yeah. The thing I really like about these straps is they are designed to loop on one end versus hooking. I also bought these nice soft pads so we don't scratch her. Yeah. Now we're ready for the seal. All right. see that wasn't exactly a smooth transition yeah <laughs> that was actually a good example because that I think is probably one of the least smooth loadings we've ever had I think so too I was, <laughs> I was like of course it's like that when we're filming yeah. but that's I mean, okay and had I not been a little more adept at doing this after doing it many 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 times I probably would have raised the nose and got the ramp a little bit different but I knew that I could you know handle it and uh, yeah, sometimes you have gravel or sand, and sometimes you have to get some speed going in. You gotta be able to ride your bike. <laughs> to, to pull it up <laughs> yeah. into the garage, yeah. You gotta be able to uh, ride it. And there's also a, a period when your back wheel's on the ground and the front wheel's on the ramp, both loading and unloading, where your feet just don't touch. So that's, you know, go, no go. You don't do that half-ass. <laughs> 99% of the time the rig is level or not too far nose up. The wheel dock holds the seal nicely so that I don't have to do anything. I can just go around and start strapping her down. If you saw our camp breakdown and setup video, which I think we might have mentioned, <laughs> back then I used to strap down via the, uh, the front highway bars here. And I don't do that anymore because I don't like to compress the shocks. So I just wrap right around here. So 
I just strap this to the rear highway bar. Also, every time we make a stop, either a rest area or gas or whatever, I will pop the door open, hop in, and just check them all. Because these straps do sometimes get a little bit loose after lots and lots of bouncing down crappy roads. So now you can see that the seal is good and, good and secure. <laughs> so that's how we secure the seal on travel days. Let's see what the next question is. And the last question, and the question all of you want to know is... Arguably the most important question. Yes. What kind of dog is that? <laughs> Daisy's like, what are you doing to me? What kind of dog is Daisy? Daisy is a Morky, which is a Maltese Yorkie mix. Yes, and AKA Fluffer Nugget. AKA Fluffer McFlugelstein. Yeah, we got all kinds of names there's a, there's, for her. She, she's got an ever never ending list of, yes. of nicknames. Yes, she was supposed to be approximately 10 pounds. She is weighing in now at a whopping 3.5 pounds. Mm -hmm. The half pound is important when you only weigh three and a half pounds. It is true. We believe that her growth was stunted by a liver issue that she had mm -hmm. that seems to be she's fairly recovered from now. Yeah, she's grown out of that or mm -hmm. grew, you know, we still have to give her special food and... She can't have people food. Yeah, but You're a tiny, tiny. Yeah, yeah. Really but, tiny. But like, just, it's, it's kind of sad. <laughs> but, but she she loves it. She's a, a great little dog, super sweet. If we ever run into any of you in a park or a meetup or something, and you get to meet Daisy, she's not always an asshole. <laughs> she will probably be very standoffish mm -hmm. and antisocial because she's a very scared dog. She, um, huh? Oh yeah, like me. <laughs> yeah, but she's the kind of dog that it takes her time to get to know somebody or know another dog but once she does then her true personality comes out which she is a riot she is she's pretty funny you're gonna get him you're gonna get him daisy who's there and for now, that concludes our whole series for the Frequently Asked Questions. Mm -hmm. Thanks for sitting in and watching. And thanks to all of you for asking all of these questions and giving us this content. Obviously, there are more. You can see those on our website. That's right. And if you have questions for us that we didn't answer in either part one or part two, feel free to ask them in the comments below. Absolutely. Anything else? Hmm. Anything else, Daisy? No, nothing? Okay. Like, Bye, everybody! She's like, Bye. Dad, come Bye. on! Bye! We also have... What is wrong? You know, I was like holding my breath. I don't know why. That's weird. Yeah. <laughs> Another art question we get asked frequently is, to which RV clubs do you belong? Oh, boy. What? Is that <laughs> my, grammar, my correct grammar? He had to say it over again. Well, I, I don't like to end a sentence in a preposition. It's just something I don't like to do. Well, let's restart. Let's start the thing <laughs> over and word it differently. So you don't sound like a prepper. One of the questions for, for which we get asked frequently. Oh, my nose. Yes, snot. Yes, snot of my nose. <laughs> snot, snot, not snot. <laughs> there are a lot of people out there that, yeah, mm -hmm. that. You did good. Thanks. <laughs> I'm excited, I'm excited. Back to Chad and Tara. Oh my god. <laughs> You're a space invader. My space. They're my space. Space invaders. I know what you I knew what you were doing. <laughs>